Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to Sea Tech Hawaii uh, Studios. This is Security Matters Hawaii. I'm your host for 2020, uh, Andrew Lanning. I'm um, happy to be here, happy to be back in the studio. We've got a brand new studio, so interesting experience for us getting set up here today. Uh, but I've got an amazing guest. Um, we drug Scott Schaefer away from his duties. I know he's trying to get busy with the new year. He is the chairman of the board for the Security Industry Association. I know many of you out there may know him and many of you may not, but Scott, welcome uh, to the studio and thank you so much for joining me today. Andrew, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm happy to kick off the new year with a, a, a true industry professional. Um, a lot of our viewers, uh, many, many obviously do know you, and I know you, you get around uh, the country quite a bit, but uh, many may not sure. know you. So if you could just share, you know, to get us started, some of your background, uh, your history, how you landed at CMAB, take us, you know, as much as you care to, uh, as much as you care to tell. <laughs> okay, fine. So I joined the security industry uh, 15 years ago. Before that, I had been involved in the IT industry uh, with a couple of uh, major companies there. Uh, involved in personal computers and enterprise servers and data warehousing and networking and ERP applications. And um, Dave McDonald, who is the CEO of Pelco, uh, brought me into the industry because they wanted to transform their company and be more ready for the digital age that was happening in security. And so I'm kind of one of those first people that uh, came in from the tech business. And, uh, I'll have to say when convergence was happening, I was uh, one of the pre-converged because I knew what this was all about. And so with Pelco, uh, for, for us during that time, it was uh, delivering enter enterprise class mission critical systems for airports, government, gaming, that would record, you know, thousands of cameras all in one place, and then the emergence of IP cameras. Uh, then I went to Aircon Vision, and we were the leaders in multi-megapixel cameras, having done the first two, three, five, ten, and then multi-imager products. So we were delivering high-value images. Um, uh, able to capture bigger ranges so we could use fewer cameras and we provided a lot of great value and uh, I think had a lot to do where uh, with what the industry is doing today with high definition video. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I think I think Pelco, everyone remembers when it was such an industry leader. And of course, I mm -hmm. guess when it was sold, is that did you stay there till they till the sale? It was sold to. I, I stayed through the. Um, through the acquisition uh, time frame for a little over a year, uh, making sure that we uh, were doing the right things to get moving there, and then I left to do other things. And you know, during the, my Pelco time is when I joined the uh, Security Industry Association, kind of drafted in by Sandy Jones, and um, because she wanted, you know, the top people in the industry to be on it, and I was lucky enough to be in her. Uh, I guess, sites to, to, uh, to do it. And then I served as the membership chair, was the secretary of the treasurer, and now get to serve as the uh, chairman of the board. That's awesome. Yeah, we, we all, um, we've all been blessed to, to be in Sandy's light at one time or another. That was a great uh, uh, um, dedication that you guys did the other night at the, uh, in New York there at the, uh, at the um, was that ISC East event, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember we not only gave a tribute to her, but we gave a tribute to you because uh, <laughs> for those of you that don't know, Andrew won the Jehan uh, Excellence and Partnership Award for his great work that he does for the industry too. Yeah, that was fun. I, I do appreciate that. I was um I hadn't met Jay before, and he was sitting sitting right beside me, so that was really neat to be getting an award in his name and meet him at the same time. So for me, it was a little bit overwhelming, but it was a, it was an excellent night. Um, you know. Uh, you guys see as such a broad supporter of so many different efforts in the industry. Um, you know, ISC, the awards night being one of those events. But there are a lot of other things that have been happening all around the country. And it seems to me that, that in the last few years, SIA is, is like everywhere. So, I mean, I was always, uh, you know, um, accustomed to running to ISC, you know, running to SIA at ISC East, at GSX. Uh, but 
there are a lot of other events that are happening and a lot of sponsorships for different elements of our industry that have needed representation. So I'd like to talk a little bit about those. Um, the first one that comes to mind was the Sea Arise program. Um, you know, helping right. out these young professionals. What was the, who, where'd that idea come from and, and uh, how's that been working out? You know, we have a lot of young professionals that are involved with the organization. And when we started to see the uh, changes that they were bringing to the standards committee, the membership committee, the research and marketing committees, we said, hey, you know what? Uh, these people probably need a uh, way that they can congregate together and uh, maybe uh, develop even better answers uh, for our future. So <laughs> we started the RISE group. It was a small group of uh, uh, high achievers and market maker kinds of people, systems integrator types, manufacturing company people. And they got together and, you know, it, the thing about it was they ran with it themselves. Awesome. They're the ones who developed who would be involved and engaged, what their charter would be, and the kinds of deliverables they wanted to bring to market, and uh, how they wanted to uh, work to uh, develop it themselves. And so it was all on them. And um, now they're up to, uh, you know, they doubled the, the number of people that are in that group. And it's now close to 400 people that are doing great work every day to make our security industry better. Yeah, and I, I think it's so instructive to have them as a group, then we can come to them, we can learn from them, we can mentor them, we can make sure that they get the sort of on-ramp that they need in the industry. Because a lot of times when you're new or you're young or you don't know who to, who to know, having that sponsorship from C is gonna help enable them to become mainstream in our industry, which is what we need. The old you know bald guys like me, we gotta retire and get out of the way. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but the the thing is that we also need we need them to influence us too. So when we were doing our uh, strategic framework discussion about what we wanted to be uh, with SIA for the next uh, you know five years or so, we enlisted a couple of those uh, people from the Rise Group to come to Washington, and we spent uh, a day kind of in a round table discussion about what we all needed to be thinking about for the future. And I'll tell you what, they gave us great insight, great ideas, and we uh, we took those and built those into our plans for the future. That is awesome leadership. The industry is going to benefit from it immensely, I'm sure. Um, you also mentioned the standards body, and I think a lot of folks maybe aren't aware of what's been going on. I, I, I wish there was greater awareness with what's, with what's been going on with standards development and, and see us push into some of that. I know, you know, Ray Colomb has a group. I think he helps out with that. But SIA has helped with the funding. In fact, Sal's out here right now. We're going to do an OSDP class tomorrow in my office yeah. for the military folks out here. So let's there talk a little bit about where that came from, because I'm, I'm aware of it from sort of OSDP forward. But um, there are some other things that have been happening there as well. Maybe you could give us uh, some, some background on that. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, the, the Standards Committee, like all of the SIA committees, is kind of championed in some ways by the SIA employees who are, you know, the staff people that uh, kind of, they make things happen for sure. But a lot of the real value and volume of ideas and work happen from members that are on those committees themselves. So over the last 15 years, we've seen a, a real change from what the standards used to do to what it does today. And to, to think that we would evolve to doing classes in Hawaii just shows the amount of uh, great work that's done by the committee members to not only figure out what the standards need to be and articulate those and, and drive maybe some efforts along industry lines to make those happen, but also to think, hey, we should be doing education to drive uh, that besides just the white papers and things that normal standards bodies might do. So um, it has been a really great group of uh, people. Uh, Steve Antill has run that for many years. And uh, hey, this is a time to also say, hey, if you're interested in standards, if you're interested in trying to drive the next uh, 
technical uh, challenges and, and try to um, make them become a part of what we look at all the time here at, uh, in our industry, uh, join the uh, Standards Committee. We'd love to have you. Yeah, there's definitely, I, I think there's going to be some challenges and maybe we'll, we'll get to some of that in the second part of our show, you know, around, uh, you know, privacy, facial recognition, things like that. I know, because um, sure. I mean, Onvif, did Onvif originated in SIA? Is that a standard that SIA helped? No, with? no, that was a separate group of companies that got together okay. and SIA uh, members as well as staff people have been involved with Onvif and uh regularly attend and participate so that's a part of what we do but that one uh, wasn't wasn't started by us didn't, didn't initiate there but you support in support of it and then i know we sat through, i sat through a dave bunzel session with plai are you guys helping out with that one as well i don't know about that one uh his um yeah he's got a, a application that lets you move like biometric templates and move identity basically across platforms like from linnell to uh um uh, software house for example you know and it does it through active directory so that one's pretty fun um, I, saw, I know there's a lot of manufacturers working with him i'm sure the events during um, uh, uh, isc is so i figured c is probably involved with that one as well it's good stuff osdp has been a, a breath of fresh air i mean we had some real problems that the industry um wasn't talking about <laughs> and now we are you know problems with the cards problems with that that um the transmission of information over wagon you know was just wide open and uh, unsecure and um, fixing that's been a, a breath of fresh air for the industry, in my opinion. Sure. Yeah, the, the, uh, the whole momentum around that started with, you know, members that came forward that articulated the problem that you just said. And uh, Joe Gittins and his team got together and they decided, hey, let's uh, really put forth some uh you know, a real program just around that. Same was true with cybersecurity. We started talking about that at board meetings maybe eight or nine years ago. It isn't really a new term, but in the security industry, it got a lot more prevalent over the last, I would say, five years probably. Uh, so we decided, hey, let's get a committee together. Let's figure out what the key issues are. And, you know, not only did we produce white papers and direction, but we've provided um, certification classes now. We have an online service that you can call a tech. And uh, if you have some questions, we can help you through with that. And uh, as we were talking earlier, Andrew, we just relaunched the cybersecurity uh, uh, working group to uh, add new members and uh, drive some new intelligence towards that. Because, you know, even with cyber that has been you know, at the forefront for the last five years, we need new thinking and better thinking all the time. And we've had uh, great success with cyber secure forums and partnership with, with PSA on the outside as well. And hey, you know, I, the only negative about it is there weren't enough, as many people in the room as I'd hope. Yeah. You know, several hundred people, but it could have been a lot more that could have gained a lot by, in a party to those events that we put on. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I was definitely in attendance and I know uh, I'm going to be helping men out. Uh, men Kirianis is the chairman for the new CS Cyber uh, Advisory Board. And so that's, I'm looking forward, you know, she's, she brings that DevSecOps uh, perspective, which is something that we need. You know, we kind of, I think in the last few years, we, we've been able to work on our people and our processes. But as we start to look at products now, um, we're, we're going to need a little more little more of a push and a little more guidance from that that software development perspective and the PM perspective around that that she, I think she'll be able to help bring to the table along with many of the others. There's definitely a, some new folks in the room, which is good, and they're from different aspects of the industry than we had previously. So I think that that leadership you're providing is awesome. Thanks. Let's, um, I tell you what, let's take a quick break. We got to pay some bills. So in about one minute, we'll be back with Scott Schaefer. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At The Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at The Crossroads. Aloha.
Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you and uh, aloha. Aloha and welcome back to the studio. This is another, this is your 2020 uh, in, initial episode of 2020 for Security Matters. Um, I'm Andrew Lanning, your host. We're talking with Scott Schaefer, the chairman of the board of Security Industry Association. Scott, thanks for hanging around for another another 14 minutes or so with us. Um, <laughs> we've got, um, we mentioned Min Kirianis, and uh, I want to go ahead and kick into the Women in Security Forum, another super success story that's, that's happening that was needed and SIA jumped behind that. And we've had a couple of, I think, a couple annual steering committee meetings now. And where did where did SIA's backing for that? Or whose idea was that? You, are these all your ideas? Or are you, you're giving credit away to everyone else. But, um, you know, I, I, think you, I think you've been behind the scenes there. Well, one of the things when, when I uh, was um, appointed or elected to be the chairman of the board, one of my major things that I wanted to see done was more diversity in the security industry. And with SIA being in such a leadership position, I wanted to make sure it was more than just the SIA staff where we have great diversity of, of, of uh, employees there. But I want to see diversity in companies that were participating with uh, SIA start to look outside for companies that were not members already, uh, but, you know, had the uh, technology platforms that we could use. Um, we had a lot of members that were active at uh, SIA events like ISC East and ISC West and maybe Securing New Ground and maybe the Government Summit that weren't participating in, in uh, committees and working groups, and I wanted to see that change. And one of the other things, not last certainly, was the Women in Security Forum. So we decided that we wanted to get together a group of women who were interested in leading that uh, activity. Don Erickson and I sat down with them in their formation and uh, charter meeting. But, you know, like the um, uh, RISE Committee, you know, this is really all them. Uh, they get sponsorship and support from SIA and the board of directors, but uh, we really wanted them to uh, lead with that, and they have had several events and uh, receptions and breakfasts at ISC East and ISC West and panel discussions, and, you know, that group has grown to over 350 members, too, and, um, hey, I expect it to be 10x that in a short period of time. Yeah, it's amazing. I know that some of the larger companies, you know, converge in access, a lot of them, and I don't know if this has come as a result of what SIA kicked off or if they had these previously, but internal to their organizations now, they're establishing uh, women's groups, you know, that, that are uh, staffed of their employees. Is that a, a trend that you're aware of? Have you seen this in a lot of other companies from our industry? I haven't seen it in a lot of companies. I've seen it with the ones that you mentioned, and okay. I think it's you know, one of those items that all companies ought to be considering that if they really want to see a boost in productivity and uh, diversity of uh, ideas and directions. So, uh, of course, that means everybody ought to do it. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's been it's been refreshing to have some of these discussions. You know, I know um, it wasn't maybe two years ago. I was talking with some guys who were they didn't really want to get engaged with mentoring women. Um, they were they were concerned that you know they were they would say something wrong or they'd be mistaken and that to me is a sort of a backwards way of thinking you know if we can open up the dialogue to having trusted conversations and recognize uh, you know our biases come with us um, you know we need to we need to work on those perhaps but you know we shouldn't be afraid to have these conversations across gender boundaries or any kind of boundaries for that matter. Yeah, uh, change isn't going to happen if you stay outside the fence and look to see what's going on inside. So uh, I think that, uh, that those are good words, Andrew. You're exactly right. 
Yeah, that's a great quote. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that maybe if uh, if I get a chance, sir. Um, <laughs> so there was uh, I know um, Sia also put out recently uh, its mega trends for 2020. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And cyber, which we sort of touched on, I think was sort of at the top of the list. And and you know we've seen a lot of movement in government now. There's the you know they're coming right at the integrators with a uh, maturity model certification. So that piece of the industry is getting ready to start to fix itself, in my opinion. At least for the integrators that work on, you know, critical infrastructure and DOD, right? Um, right, but right. Beyond that, there's a lot of other things, and some that you mentioned. So let's talk a little bit about privacy. Um, I know I think we have a group that works with Capitol Hill and things like that. What um, what can you tell us about CIA sort of backing or the position or whatever uh, with regard to privacy and the you know what our industry should be thinking about? Well, uh, privacy even got more attention at our last executive uh, conference, Securing New Ground, in, um, in October than I thought it would get. It seemed like a number of the panels, even if that wasn't the topic, they were injecting their thoughts about the importance of privacy because it is a big uh, issue or opportunity, whichever way that you look at it. And... You know, it, it kind of started uh, in Europe about uh, three or four years ago. Uh, the U European Union was uh, pushing on their requirements. There would be levies and fines and, you know, action taken for companies that didn't accommodate. Uh, so because SIA has members and SIA thinks globally, uh, we were all over that to begin with. And and made sure that GDPR was one of those things that we would provide guidance to the SIA members on so that they would be equipped when they sold in Europe or um, uh, manufactured in Europe. Uh, so that was one of the things that we did. Now California is stepping up their requirements on privacy. And so we're also uh, very engaged in you know, providing guidance on that to our members. So. You know, it isn't that we were thinking of it, in, you know, ahead of where these rules came, but when we saw them, we jumped all over them and made sure that our members were equipped to deal with them. Yeah, I um, I think we we capture a whole lot of information, um, you know, with our camera systems, with our biometric systems, uh, with uh, even if you think about IDS, just the fact of people moving around in our in the facilities that we protect and. You know, I think for a long time, it was just sort of like, okay, we grab this information, we own it, but we're going to have to sort of, I think, develop a bit of a, an awareness for how that information could be used uh, against someone if it were to fall in the wrong hands and things like that, which I think brings, you know, encryption and some of these other ideas that our industry has be begun to mature around. Um, do you do you expect law to impact us? Do you think there will be legislation that uh, sort of impacts the direction our industry goes in the future? Absolutely. When you see the activity that's happening in San Francisco and other cities, uh, laws will um, will happen. Uh, we can help to uh, educate the politicians and lawmakers to drive a, a sense from the security industry about the way they ought to think about it. Not just, hey, it's an invasion of privacy, but when you think about cameras at schools and airports and stadiums, they're not there to invade privacy. They're, they're there to protect the people that are attending or active in, um, in providing useful service to those, uh, those places. So in many ways, uh, a lot of the new technologies that we're embracing from facial recognition and analytics and artificial intelligence, you know, think about that, Andrew. Those are right now top of mind, not only for the security industry, but for the tech industry too. And who'd have thought 15 years ago that the security industry would be front and center with the tech, tech issues and opportunities that are hitting us right now? I think it's really fabulous how far we've come from, from those days of coax cable and matrix switchers to where we are today. And, you know, with that comes a responsibility and yes. with that comes a, a need for SIA to do more to uh, influence, if you want to use that word, or at least educate uh, lawmakers so that they're doing the right things and not just looking at the uh, negative things that could happen from the use of technology. Mm. 
is it um, is it difficult for for us as an industry to inject a voice? You know, I know we're not like the automotive industry or the airline industry. Is what's the what's the I, I know it when you get around Capitol Hill or DC or lawmakers, what's their understanding of our industry? I always think they they think we're just guards. You know, I, I don't know. Well, there's kind of a mixed bag. Some really know and some really don't know. And sometimes it depends on how much security is deployed in their, you know, in their hometowns where they're from. And that's where they, you know, gain some of their experiences. So if there were school activities that required an additional dose of uh, security, maybe they know, know more about that than um policymakers that are in constituencies that don't have so much going on. So uh, one of the things that SIA does, we do this great government summit. Uh, we've done meetings on safe schools right there in the Capitol. And I was able to attend uh, one of those one time too. And that was two years ago, I think. So some of those lawmakers and government people attend those um, events. And then we've had a chance I, I didn't take advantage of it for many years, but to go around on our Capitol Hill visits with the SIA staff and get to meet the uh, lawmakers that are making things happen. We give awards to those that have done things like make uh, monies available for more airport or safe city security um, and uh, get to talk to them about uh, what's coming and what technology trends are going to be impacting the future of our country. Wow. I, I wasn't aware of that. Well, that's awesome. That's, uh, our our industry is definitely benefiting from the leadership that you're providing up there. And I'm glad there's a, a sort of a unified voice. You know, there seems to be, for me, often some separation between manufacturers and integrators and the clients. So I'm glad that at least government's got someone they can look at and talk to up there. That's helpful uh, to know that the, the perspective is being shared in a way that can benefit all of us. Um, we're yeah, just about out of time, Scott. If you got a, a closing thought there, something you'd like to share with our audience, um, and then we'll uh, we'll run it on off. Oh, sure. Well, you know, one of the things that I think is really important, besides the mega trends, and we've touched on a number of those already today, but one of the big trends is the workforce and the workforce development of the future. And one of the big things that we're doing now is working to uh, bring more people into the industry from colleges, universities, uh, trade schools, high schools, the military. And with that comes kind of a responsibility or an opportunity to educate. So we're doing a lot with cybersecurity education. We're onboarding uh, people. I think the, you know, the uh, SIA um, program for project managers is really great and it gives a great background on the security industry itself. Um, but we're going to have to do even more. So we're driving more online classes. We're doing uh, brief uh, education um, um, items, too, that are available to members and non-members alike. And we're also driving education through our center of expertise or center of excellence, uh, manufacturers, systems integrators, and consultants training programs. They can come to SIA for that use our website and then get directed for the uh, information that they're seeking. And so we can act as the hub for that and perhaps uh, drive a great experience and maybe faster uh, movement through the industry by doing that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, thanks everyone out there. We need help. We have a great industry. Join us if you can. And Scott, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. And we'll see you all next week on Security Matters. Aloha.